<clears throat> Good morning everyone <clears throat> and welcome to our first morning in a long time of no QR check-in. Masks are optional and you can sing as loud as you like. We will be having communion this morning and that will be <clears throat> with the uh, uh, little small tongs that will be dipped in the wine and then placed on your hand. And our opening hymn is O oh, for a Closer Walk with God and sing along everybody. lovely somebody. <laughs> the Lord be with you. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry to be off by stroke. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Father. <laughs> the Lord is here. He's spirit with us. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. We remember the problems across the world. We pray for God's peace to be with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And always so we give to one another a sign of God's peace. And uh, our lovely friends up in the choir and on the organ stool. Today we think about the Lenten journey of renewal and healing, both for our environment and our community. We acknowledge the first peoples of this land and all who call Australia home. We give thanks for God's loving care for families across the world and ask God's special blessing and protection for those who are in our hearts. Amen. Amen. And we continue. Almighty God, to, to whom, whom all hearts are open, all the time, and, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Recalling the brokenness of our world, the suffering of the people in the Ukraine, and the prayers of across the globe that God may turn the hearts of those who oppress the freedoms of others. We ask for God's forgiveness, healing and strength. Let us remember ourselves and our world in all its need, particularly remembering those dealing with natural disasters and other troubles. God, our creator, you have made us one family on earth, but many find themselves separated 
instead of connected. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Redeemer, we share your forgiveness, but our world is sharing fear and anxiety, and especially remembering the people of the Ukraine and all who strive for peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Living Spirit of God, your mercies rise new every morning. We remember all who suffer as a result of floods sweeping our nation. Help us to share the light of hope in challenging times. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God forgive us, Christ renew us, and the Spirit enable us to live in love. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. A colleague for peace. Gracious God, the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend your children against all assaults of their enemies, and establish your kingdom of peace, justice and love. Amen. Gracious God, whose Son Jesus Christ was tempted as we are, but did not sin, as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathe into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and one another. Call forth our penitence and acts of love. Amen. Will you please be seated as David Martin brings us the first reading. A reading from the 26th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land, that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall make this response before the Lord your God. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labour on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders 
and he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Father Brooks is going to bring us the second reading. A reading from the 10th chapter of the letter of St Paul to the Romans. <clears throat> Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, the word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus, Lord, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one in whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? 
As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Stand to welcome the gospel if we're able. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory be to you. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days. and When they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. And the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple. To him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. For the gospel, the good news of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May my words be to the glory of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the freedom of the Spirit. Amen. Will you please be seated? Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? When you're under fire, in a military sense, you can very easily lose your sense of perspective and direction. And it certainly seems that in some ways we have been under fire as a community. A constant barrage of attacks on our sense of morale and sense of peace. I used to think that normal life had enough challenges. But then of course we had the bushfires, then COVID, not just one kind, of course. One's never enough, is it? Uh, but then there's the other sort as well. Then the rapid fire 
of masks, social distancing, QR codes, vaccination passports, rat tests, quarantine and restrictions. Haven't we all learned an awful lot? Haven't we all been terribly busy? And not at all, some of us, because the COVID arrangements have meant that so many of our plans have changed or got on hold. Of course, at St Matthew's, for months the church was closed. And then no Holy Communion of sorts. Until, of course, today. There we are. No singing. And then, just when we thought the coast is clear, the rain gauges are working overtime. And just when things are as damp as they could possibly be, we come to Ash Wednesday, when you think nothing you could ever catch fire. And so you might have a, a, a dot or a, a bash or a little bit of black on your, your forehead, looking as if someone shot you. Or on a card, some ash, because after all we can't be too careful. Then of course Rod Marsh and Shane Warne. Goodness me, from every direction. But let's not forget some of the other things. Let's not forget Ukraine. Let's not forget the problem of the abuse of power through Russia. It's so easy for perspectives to get lost in the headline of the moment. There are natural temptations out there for us to seize on the latest thing and to lose what's really important. Many people have spoken about temptation in such very different ways. Oscar Wilde spoke about temptation. You know, he said the only way to um, overcome temptation was to yield to it. And then, of course, I know that uh, Shane Warne also spoke about temptation um, and people could see their own lives being played out in the way that he dealt with it. And uh, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, Rowan Williams, also spoke about temptation in yet a different way. But for us, this whole series of stories about Jesus being tempted could also uh, find us being lost as to the real purpose of that being uh, in this, the Bible story for us this morning. You think about Jesus being uh, going out a bit like, um, well, just after, just after his, his baptism, just after he was he's hearing God's words of love to him, just after he's... Uh, broken onto the scene as an adult, then it seems to be like an escape to the country. He's suddenly gone away from all of that, gone away from getting away from it all um, and going away. But in actual fact, the story is about him drawing close. It said that Jesus was, uh, went to the wilderness full of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God had just told him, you're my son, you belong, I love you. His heart was full of love as he went into that place. And it was away, 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 away. But in actual fact, what he was doing was he was identifying himself with us. He'd just been baptised. In that baptism, he is joining our team. He's saying, I'm with you. But the devil is trying to say, actually, you're not really. Come away. Um, be something else. Be, there we are, I thought, a superhero. Now there we are, that's, that's, a, that's Wonder Woman, that one. I know because I bought it at uh, Chemist Warehouse. <laughs> um, and, and, and Superman, which I think I got from the op shop. Uh, the idea of, of actually um, saying that we're different, that he's different, um, that he doesn't suffer from the same difficulties that we would normally suffer from. He's not stuck in our story, but he can, through some sort of magic, uh, disappear or save himself and depart from our sort of predicament. The temptation, first, uh, when he's so hungry, uh, the temptation for food. I'm not sure whether you, as you read this uh, about being, uh, being without bread, whether you thought about the way that we haven't had com communion in bread sense. I'm not sure whether that's on your radar. 
Um, and for some people it would be, I'm sure. The thing that I most want. Now, if you can't have something, it gnaws away at you, doesn't it? You know, perhaps you've, um, you've, had, you've, you've, you've been looking for something. You've lost it. And it's, now it's the only thing in your mind. It is the only thing that you want. I don't know whether you've been to, a, to an auction or something like that and you've missed the thing that you really wanted and nothing else will do. Because it gnaws away at you and it, it eats away at you. Well, perhaps say uh, bread can be like that. For Jesus, he, he had deprived himself to try to focus on the things of God and he was physically hungry. And in that moment of physical hunger that we feel ourselves, the devil says, actually, you're bigger than this. You're better than this. You don't need to join that lot because there's a magic way of you out of this mess. And instead of using the Bible as a shield, the devil uses the Bible verses to try to trap Jesus, which is fascinating, isn't it? Well, you imagine using a Bible verse to try to trap someone. That's exactly what the devil does. Uh, the Bible verses are not a shield um, or a bulletproof vest. They're actually a way of, of um, trying to trap Jesus to, to, to abandon us, to try to leave our situation. And of course, Jesus doesn't give in. And then, of course, he takes him to the pinnacle of a temple and then sees the world as it is. And think about worldly power. And perhaps as you read that, you might think about Russia and the Ukraine. I certainly did. Thinking about the idea that uh, we are, are being able to control somebody else and having all the power in the world, all the weapons, all the, all the magic, all the... And Jesus says, no, um, I'm not going to be part of that story either. Human vulnerability and weakness, um, that's also part of our story. And then Jesus says, throw yourself off. Throw yourself down. Because you'll be fine, the angel will look after you. And Jesus says no, because he's remaining identified with us uh, in our human condition. So instead of these temptations actually being something that d takes Jesus away, it actually draws him closer to us. The temptations, I suppose, for us is to f see ourselves at the end of this as, as weak and no good. Perhaps we can think of ourselves as so unlike Jesus. The idea of, uh, of, of yielding to temptation, the temptation to, to have things and to be. But instead of that, we perhaps instead we might think about Jesus' baptism and ours. Jesus identifying himself with us and what that can mean. Some people think that uh, we shouldn't really do things about the outside world uh, in church. Why we think about Ukraine, for example? Why think about, um, about the environment? Why think about homelessness? And why think about mental health? Don't those things belong somewhere else outside? But Jesus' call to us is to be one and to draw near. Because when Jesus joins our family in baptism, he comes into all the turmoil and mess and the wilderness that can sometimes be our lives. He comes right in the centre of it. He joins the centre of the storm. And so wherever our mess is, wherever our wars are, then Jesus will be there and Jesus' people also shall be there. And this is the a wonderful message um, of Jesus' baptism, temptation, but also the, the whole story of redemption. When Charles and John Wesley uh, started uh, going around the world and uh, talking about the love of Jesus, they thought the church had departed so far from the ordinary life of ordinary people. They thought that the church's mission should be about redeeming everyday life. And so many people uh, were uh, criticising them. In fact, they got thrown out of churches. But nevertheless, they continued because they knew that the love of Jesus will cause us to be with people, not away from them. And so Charles Wesley wrote a love song, uh, which is about God being with us at every moment 
and then us being with the needs of others. He wrote, Jesus, you lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly, while the nearer waters roll, while the tempest still is high. Hide me, O my Saviour, hide, till the storm of life is past, safe into the haven guide, O receive my soul at last. Other refuge have I none, hangs my helpless soul on thee, leave, ah, leave me not alone, still support and comfort me. All my trust on thee is stayed, all my help from thee I bring, Cover my defenceless head with the shadow of thy wing. We stand together as we offer a prayer for Ukraine. As we pray for a peace for Ukraine and for the world, we also remember peace at home. And this particular prayer, written by the Archbishops of Canterbury and York, is also used uh, at a holy, uh, sac sacred heart, <laughs> sacred heart parish up the road, um, and was used last night. Uh, and uh, Father Mark was saying that uh, we are sharing this prayer as well during this period and praying for peace. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus the Prince of Peace. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. The Lord God Almighty is our Father. He loves us and tenderly cares for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Saviour. He has redeemed us and will defend us to the end. The Lord the Holy Spirit is among us. He will lead us in God's holy way. To God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory today and forever. Amen. I'd like to be seated as Annette Gorham, the head of our pastoral care team, leads us in prayer. We give thanks for Christian people working and praying together for peace and for our local faith communities. And the words of the Pope, every human being desires communion and peace. Everyone needs peaceful coexistence. But this can grow only when we also build inner peace in our heart. Let us pray for the world God loves, through Christ who walks beside us in our Lenten journey, to deliver us from temptation and every evil, saying, Lord of compassion, hear Amen. our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in the way of freedom, justice and truth. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm, that you would turn the hearts of all to kindness and friendship. We pray for the wounded and the captive, the grieving and the homeless, that in their trials you may know your love and support. Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and fight for justice. Help us who today remember the cost of war to work for a better tomorrow as we commend to you lives lost in terror and conflict. Bring us all at the last to the peace of your presence.
through Jesus Christ our Lord, Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. We give thanks for your enfolding love, for the wonder and refreshment we find in children, for the comfort and patience we find in older people, for the courage and friendship we discover in unexpected places, and for the small acts of kindness that make the world of difference. Lord of compassion, hear Lord. our prayer. Loving God, help us to defend people from prejudice and misunderstanding, that we may reflect your welcome to all. You help us to be one in mind, body and spirit. Give to all your children a new heart to reach out in faith, hope and love and to walk gently with others until you bring us all safely home. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we bring before God those in special need or distress, especially any known to us. We pray for those who have recently died and for those who are remembered with love at this time. Rest eternal, grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. In these weeks of Lent, give us the faith to share your loving care, protection and strength, and to find healing and hope. We offer our prayers to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing the hymn, Jesus, you lover of my soul, during which offertory for those in need we brought forward. Kian and Bennett and you, of course, uh, have helped bring these things forward. And I know that uh, these little chaps are symbols of uh, 
of unity because they belong to two congregations, don't you? You belong here and you belong up at the Catholic Church up at Maid Street as well, don't you? Well, I saw your dad last night. That's right. Um, and so as we think about things that we share together, we also share uh, the idea of us being one in Jesus and also being Jesus' friends then try and help others, don't we? Whoever they are. So everyone belongs to us in that sense as well. We are all one family. So when people need help, like me, <laughs> when people need help, <laughs> that, uh, that, that everyone is our business. And so if they need uh, somewhere to, to stay, um, if they need some food, uh, if they need someone to talk to, um, if they need special help, then it's our privilege to help them, isn't it? And so thank you very much for bringing these, this food up this morning because that will go to people who really need it and it's been brought by people who really care. Bless you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Thank you very much. I might give him a little clap. Is that good? Thank you very much. <laughs> Great for all the help that we can get. And uh, speaking of help today, as we are uh, taking communion, just in case you've forgotten how to do it, <laughs> so we're going to be uh, standing up, and you know that, uh, that Kathy and Gillian will be actually and giving it out here, and John um, up in the uh, up in the choir loft. There we are. So for those members of the choir who can't come down, um, and also you know that uh, also that uh, the Kathy and Jillian also nurses, and they'll be what they'll be doing is they'll be taking a host, um, and if you place um, on your hand would really be lovely, and what they'll do is they'll put it on your hand just like that, um, and that will be just marvellous. Okay, thank you. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give, to give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is yet to come. Your love, made visible in Christ Jesus, brings home the lost, restores the sinner, and gives dignity to the despised. Therefore, with all your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you and singing. like to be seated. And so we pray, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice, mercy and compassion will be seen in all the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the friendship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Let us pray for peace, justice and forgiveness as Jesus has taught his friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This bread is broken in many pieces, but together we share God's love, for we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. God's love shines for all his people. God welcomes all the children. All are invited. All are welcome. Come.
here. I'm going to have to use my hands.
I'd like to stand. We say to get the peace prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, in pardon that we are pardoned, and in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Loving God, show us the way so we might see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly, day by day. You send us into the world to love. Give us the grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your Spirit. Amen. Amen. You please be seated as Vicky Chick is going to bring us the notices. Thanks for joining us this morning. <coughs> That's the end of our quarter to ten finishes. I think we're back to normal, so that was great this morning. Um, the of course, we're still not doing the offertory, so the departing offertory bags are at the back of the church um, as you leave, or you can use the tap and go machine, which is $10 a tap, and as I always say, you can tap as many times as you like. And this helps with our mission for the homeless and for people in need. <coughs> we have Billowa bread this morning, some bread and some pastries on sale outside the church. And this afternoon is Even Song at 5 p.m. And tunes on Tuesday, organ recital with James Flores at 1.10 this week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. I should uh, mention that very shortly, in fact, as probably as in your notice sheet, it might be. No. No. That uh, the diocese continues to celebrate the anniversary of its uh, inauguration and so we're going to be uh, joining with um, people across the diocese and also members of our own choir are going to be uh, leading the singing down at the cathedral. Is that next week? Does it say that? Is that next week? Yes. yes. Does it say that? What time? Does it say 2.30? What time does it say? Well, it will be on the website, folks. <laughs> okay, please. I'm sure it's an important thing. It is 2.30. It is 2.30. Ah, from on high. There we are. Thank you very much. <laughs> I heard a voice from heaven saying... <laughs> That's right. Yes, 2.30. Uh, so you might consider going down to that service um, and uh, supporting our parish and waving the flag for St Matthew's um, as it's part of the Diocese of Wangaratta. Now, <laughs> there we are. And so the choir leads us in the hymn, Over a Heart to Praise My God.
Lord be with you. We open our hearts to receive God's blessing. May God bless us and hold us close. May God's light shine for us and from us and those for whom we pray. And God's love be with us always and give us peace. And may the blessing of God the Father, the grace of God the Son, and the friendship of God the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us and those we love and those for whom we pray today and always. Amen. Amen. We remain standing for the Ukraine National Anthem. <laughs> continue to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.